Hi, welcome to this next presentation about what is the process for increasing the rent and more specifically, how to increase the rent in the correct way to ensure that you're, you get the best return on your investment, not necessarily the highest price, but the best return on your investment, the right tenant who feels happy in your property, etc. So perhaps you don't know the correct way to increase your rent. Perhaps you want to know what your options your tenant has um, in responding to the rent increases and perhaps you're uncertain how to present that rent increase to your tenants. Before we get into that, my name is Chris Jones. My previous career was uh, in tw 20 years as an accountant in the industry. I've been a landlord since 2005, investing and refurbishing properties. I established Jones & Co in 2014, been letting agents speaker since 2016 and host of a property meeting since 2019 and we started our podcast in 2023. Things I enjoy doing are sailing, skiing, running, cycling, and traveling. So we established Jones & Co in 2014. We manage hundreds of properties Norfolk wide, and our products include lettings, sales, property acquisitions, refurbishments, and coaching. We have access to a wide network of property professionals that we can help put and point you in the direction of. So how to increase your rent in the correct way to ensure you get the best return on your investment. So quite a few things to look at here. So firstly, why would you consider increasing your rent? And common reasons why landlords decide not to increase their rent. And then have a quick look about the cost or calculating the cost of not increasing your rent. And then we're gonna look at number four, the process to increase the rent in your property. So how to present that to a tenant and the option your tenants have at the end once you presented that rent increase to them. So I'll guide you through all these steps and at the end I'll explain how you can achieve all of this. So firstly, why would you consider increasing the rent in your property at all? So firstly, cost of living changes. Inflation happens and everything gets more expensive over time. So that, that might be your own personal cost of living and indeed maintaining the property will get more expensive over time. And indeed mortgage rates go up and down and owning that property might be costing you more than it has done in the past. Second reason is that market prices do change so the rent tends to increase over time um, and it's good to know what that increase is and so you stay abreast of that change. Uh, number three, you need a fair return on your investment. You've bought the property and it needs to provide a return for you. And also number four, it gives you some stability. So making sure that your rent is in excess of your mortgage commitments and your maintenance commitments. So it will deliver a, a surplus or a profit and this is needed for your financial stability of that, of that property. So common reasons that we hear why landlords don't increase rent and you might, you might um, resonate with some of these. What if my tenant leaves? Yeah, that is, that is a consideration. Um, I don't need the money, it's not as important to me. Um, so I wanna be fair to my tenants, that might be another. Another reason, so there's an impression that discounting the rent is a good thing to do for tenants. Um, and my tenant has been my property for a long time, so I want to look after them. You know, they've looked after me, they've looked after my property, so I want to be fair to them. And the most common reason I, I would suggest is that landlords don't have a process for doing it. It's not a regular diary entry and they just forget. So time goes by, rents don't increase, and then you're left in a position where you're below market rent. So calculate the cost of not increasing your rent. So I think it's important to decide to do it or not to do it. Either way is totally fine, but it's important to do it deliberately. So imagine you were 10% behind the market rent for, for one year. Maybe that's okay. What about two or three or four or five years? So after a time, if you don't increase your rent, and we've seen this happen with many self-managing landlords, that they are substantially behind the market rent, and they might not know that, um, and then yeah, it's just good to know what that, what, has, what that has cost you, what's the opportunity cost of doing that. Um, so where could that money be used? So once you know that figure, could you use it on yourself or indeed to maintain your property? Um, so the rent increase process. So firstly, engage with your tenants. Um, can your tenant afford the increase? So if it's a little increase, I suspect, say if it's like a three or four year gap up since an increase, that might be more difficult. Um, approach the conversation sensitively. Um, you may not want to, um, your tenants to give notice. So you don't want the immediate reaction to be, I'm leaving. 
Um, so how much um, to increase your rent? Be fair and realistic, I think at this point. So in terms of the process about how you increase rent, there, is, there are correct ways to do it. So firstly, check your contract as a rent increase clause and that the clause says that the tenancy will continue in a periodic tenancy after that. This means if it says those things, you have a contractual periodic tenancy and you must follow the requirements in the clause instead of serving a section 13 notice. If your contract does not have a rent review clause or a clause that says it will continue on a, a periodic basis, then you must use section 13 to increase the rent. There'll be a summary table in a minute to explain these, these routes. If your tenancy says that it is a statutory periodic tenancy, it will, um, sorry, if your tenancy says a statutory periodic tenancy will be created at the end of the fixed term, then you must follow section 13 notice, even if you have a rent review clause. So when using section 13 notice, you can only propose a new rent during the periodic part of that tenancy. However, in either case, whether it's contractual or statutory periodic, in either case, you can also increase the rent as part of a tenancy renewal process, providing your tenant agrees um, to the renewed terms. So a bit more on the contractual periodic tenancy. You may insert a rent review clause to the agreement, provided it's, it's fair and the increase will be binding on the tenant and the landlord. The landlord then can follow the terms of the clause to increase the rent, but where there is no rent review clause in a tenancy agreement, the landlord may use the prescribed section 13 or form four to increase the rent, but not until the fixed term is over. So if you have a statutory period tenancy, the landlord may not create a rent review clause as um, and a fixed term and statutory periodic tenancy are separate. They must, in this case, use section 13, which um, a prescribed form instead. However, unlike the contractual periodic tenancy, this can be served as soon as the fixed term is over, even if only six months has passed since the tenant has moved in. So that can get quite involved, but here's a quick summary. So contractual periodic tenancy, do you have a rent review clause? Yes, therefore follow the clause. If it's a contractual period tenancy, do you have a rent review clause? No, then use form 13. Tenancy type, statutory periodic, there is no rent review clause applicable, so you must use form 13. So a couple more points, you can get the notice from the .gov website, um, it must be written notice, given two months or in line with the payment period. So if your tenant pays quarterly, it will be must in line with those periods. It must state the current rent, new rent and effective date. It must um, Normally, you can only increase it by once a year. And there may be benefits to do that. So what we would recommend as an agency is review your rents every year and there may be a small um, increase per year would be appropriate. You can't issue um, a rent increase during a fixed term unless your tenant's rent review clause allows it. Um, and talk to your tenants, and if they agree, perhaps the best way may be to issue a new fixed term agreement. So how to present a rent increase. So justify the reasons for the rent increase. So rather than saying it is this because and give no reason, perhaps cite market conditions, perhaps cite maintenance costs have increased, perhaps cite you need a fair return on your investment and perhaps here are some comparables. So put a bit of context around that communication. You can also cite statistics. The Office of National Statistics is a great um, resource and you can look at the price, the rent increases by region and that might give you some sense of what the rent increase should be year on year. Encourage communication. So it's important that your tenants can feel that they can talk to you about what you've proposed. Um, listen and be open to negotiation on, on rent increases. Perhaps it might be easier just to kind of work with your tenant, maybe not achieve the rent you, that you first set out to achieve, but to keep your tenant relationship good. So the options your tenant has to increase, uh, to, to respond 
to your rent increase. They can accept the rent amount and pay it from their next payment due date or when, it's, when you've asked for it. They can dispute the rent amount and they can refer it to a tribunal, the first tier tribunal, before the start date of the, of the date at which the rent is due. So they can do that and the tribunal will then look at that and decide the maximum amount of rent you can, you can ask for or will be paid. So there are routes that tenants can dispute. So that's all set out in, in, the, in the form 13 if you, if you go that route. So summary, um, why you might increase your rent, the process for increasing your rent and how to present it um, to your tenants and the options your tenants have. So hope you enjoyed that. I'll explain now how you can um, get all of these things. So if you've enjoyed today's presentation and you would like my team's help to do all of this for you, please do book a phone call with me or a member of my team. The link is in the video below. We'd love to speak to you about your issues or thoughts you're having. We do have spaces to take some phone calls, but when the spaces fill up, they are gone. On that phone call, we will listen to your issues, we'll understand what you would like to achieve and we'll give you our best advice. And for the end of that phone call, if it feels like a good fit, we will see if we can work with you. So please do book a phone call on the link below. Until next time, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe to this channel and like and comment on the videos you've seen and click on the links below this video to get access to our other free content in this channel. And until next time, here is to the success of your property business.